You know, one of the challenges, though, I think for many people um, is that there is so much suffering. And as an example, I'm a doctor, and uh, uh, one of the things that happens to doctors, and especially people, if you will, in the caring professions, is they get overwhelmed with suffering, as does the average person. And they say there's so much suffering, but what can I do? Uh, people are afraid of being overwhelmed by suffering. And uh, they lose the hope, the courage, and so on. There must be a way uh, to live in order for you to, uh, to be strong enough, in order to, um, to, to handle the suffering inside of you. And if you don't know how to handle the suffering in, inside of you, you cannot help another person to suffer less. And that is why the practice of mindfulness, uh, first of all, is to help you yourself to suffer less. First of all, you have to learn how to release the tension in your body, how to reduce uh, the pain in your body. And the practice of mindful breathing, mindful walking, sitting meditation, uh, total relaxation uh, can be very helpful in reducing the pain uh, in your body. And then with the practice of mindfulness, you can, you can learn how to create, generate a feeling of joy and of, and of uh, happiness, or of happiness. And this can be done by anyone if uh, we, we want to, uh, to learn. Uh, for instance, when you uh, breathe in, and if you focus your attention on your in-breath, and then you can bring your mind home to your body. And there is the energy of mindfulness, concentration in your in-breath. And you realize that you are alive, because uh, someone who is already dead does not breathe in anymore. So uh, one in-breath that may last three or four seconds can create mindfulness, concentration, and insight. And um, when the body and the mind are together, you are established in the present moment, in the here and the now. And you can get in touch with the wonders of life that are available in the here and the now. And, and with that kind of mindfulness and concentration, you realize that you are lucky enough, luckier than many people. You have enough conditions to be happy right now, right here, and you don't have to run into the future to look for happiness. And that happens after three or four seconds of practice of mindful breathing. You get the insight that there are conditions of happiness that are available in the here and the now. You are very lucky, you are alive. Insight can, can happen just after a few seconds of practice. And if you recognize that uh, these uh, conditions of happiness are there available, so you can create a feeling of joy and of happiness right away. So a good practitioner of mindfulness can create and a feeling of joy, a feeling of happiness for him, for her, and for the other person. And that is easy and enough. And then the mindfulness practice can help you to go home to yourself in order to, to get in touch with the pain, the suffering, the despair, the anger, the violence inside. And uh, with the energy of mindfulness and insight, you know how to handle the suffering within yourself. You are compassionate toward yourself. Because love for another person depends on your capacity to love yourself. If you don't know how to love yourself and take care of yourself, how can you love and take care of another person? So uh, the practitioner learns how to suffer how to handle the pain, suffering inside of him or her. And because he knows how to do that with uh, compassion, 
with insight, with uh, mindfulness, he can suffer much less than the other people who do not know the practice. And uh, he, can, he can go further. He can make good use of the suffering in order to create uh, something more positive, like understanding and compassion. It's like uh, people who grow uh, lotus flowers. They know how to make good use of mud in order to grow uh, lotus. No mud, no lotus. No suffering, no happiness, no compassion. So, so um, the practitioner generating the energy of mindfulness and concentration recognize the pain in him or in her and embrace it uh, tenderly. And the fact that you can recognize and embrace your pain can bring you a relief because the pain is a kind of energy and mindfulness is another kind of energy. This energy embracing the other energy will make, uh, produce a kind of change, like a mother uh, holding her baby. The baby suffers. The mother does not know yet what is the cause of the suffering of the baby. But the fact that she's holding the baby tenderly can make the baby suffer less right away. Because that, there is the energy of tenderness from the mother penetrating into the body of the baby that, uh, that brings relief. And if uh, she uh, continues with uh, mindful holding, and she will find out the cause that make the baby suffer, and then she, she can change the situation. So the practitioner, uh, while holding um, his pain, uh, her uh, anger, is like holding our own baby. We have to, to handle the suffering in us tenderly with non-violence. We should not try to suppress uh, the pain. We should not uh, suppress our baby, our own baby. And uh, you get a relief. And if uh, you know how to practice, you can gradually transform uh, the pain, the, the, the anger, and the despair in you. So um, the practice of mindfulness help people to, uh, to suffer in a such a way that they suffer much, much less than other people who do not know how to practice to get a relief and to make good use of the suffering in order to create understanding and compassion that are the very foundation of happiness. There is a deep uh, connection between suffering and happiness. It's like um, a connection between the mud and the lotus. If uh, you have the time to listen to your own suffering, to look deeply into the nature of your own suffering, understanding will arise. Understanding here means understanding of the suffering. And uh, when understanding arises, compassion is born. That is the, the mechanics of, uh, of uh, compassion. When you look at another person, if you have the time, and if you look at him or her mindfully and with concentration, you can recognize the suffering in that person. And if you are more concentrated, you can find out that that person does not know how to handle the suffering in him. And that is why he remains victim of his own suffering. So far, no one has helped him to handle the suffering in him. And if, since he suffers, he makes the other people around him suffer, even if he doesn't want to do so. So with mindfulness and concentration, you can realize, you can recognize the suffering in him and understand the suffering. And if that understanding arises, you are not angry at him anymore. 
and compassion because compassion has been born in your heart. And when compassion is born in your heart, you don't suffer anymore. It's like a miracle. And instead of trying to punish him or her for having made you suffer, you want to say something or to do something in order to, to help him suffer less. And that can be done uh, in our daily life with the practice of mindfulness uh, and concentration. So if we understand our own suffering, and then it will be much easier for us to understand the suffering of another person and help him. And that is why the meditation on compassion, on suffering, should begin with yourself. Because our suffering carries within itself the suffering of our father, of our mother, of our ancestors. Maybe our father suffers so much and he did not know how to, ha- to transform and handle the suffering he has transmitted to you. And they are in your genes. And that is why you are a receiver of that transmission. You have to accept it. And if you know the practice, you will transform the suffering of your father in you, which is also your your own suffering. And your suffering also reflects the suffering of your society, of your nation. And if you understand your own suffering, you understand the suffering of your community, of your nation, of your people. And that is why understanding suffering is very important uh, for compassion to arise. And once compassion um, is there, you suffer much less. And suffering um, has a positive role to say, to, 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 to do. Uh, we can speak about the goodness, the usefulness of suffering. It's like the goodness, the usefulness of, uh, usefulness of uh, the mud in helping producing lotus flowers. <clears throat> and that's why my idea of the kingdom of God is not a place where there is no suffering. If there is no suffering, there is no happiness either. Uh, that is the teaching of interbeing. Interbeing. You cannot be by yourself alone. You have to interbe with us. The left cannot be by itself alone. The left has to be the, uh, to in the be with the right. If uh, you remove the right, the left disappears right away. If politically you are on the left, don't wish that the right would disappear. <laughs> if the right disappears, you did disappear, disappear also. <laughs> so that is the teaching of interbeing. Interbeing means you cannot be. You can only interbe. And I think compassion is uh, like everything else. Compassion cannot be by itself. When you look into a flower, you see the flower is made of non-flower elements, like a cloud. I can see a cloud and I can touch a cloud in the flower. Because all of us know that without the cloud, there will be no rain and no flower can grow. So when I look into the flower, I see non-flower elements, including the element of a cloud. I see the sunshine. I see the minerals, the earth, the gardener, and so on. Non-flower elements coming together in order to help the flower to manifest as a wonder of life. Compassion is a flower, and compassion is made of non-compassion elements. 